Welcome back to the Snod Pod with John Snodgrass, your mortgage resource where we're talking real estate, mortgages, and beyond. I've got Luke Bruckner here, realtor from Bunbury Associates. We're going to talk a little Madison real estate. He's kind of the king of Madison real estate. He's done over $750 million in volume since he's gotten in the business. So, Luke, thanks for, for driving down today. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, well, let's start with, I guess, what were you doing before real estate and when and how did you get into real estate? Yeah, yeah. So before I was doing real estate, I was living in northern Wisconsin. Uh, I worked up there for seven years building rock walls for a guy okay. in the water. Okay. Dropped me off with a wheelbarrow, a shovel, and uh, that's all I would do all day long. Okay. Evenings, I would work at a fine dining restaurant, and I did that for about three years. And those are the things, once you do that, you realize what you do not want to do the rest sure. of Sure, yeah, yeah. So my mom was into um, flipping houses up okay. north and in Madison, and I was helping her do work and stuff like that, and I just decided I'm going to go get my real estate license. Okay. So I got that done, and I was working for my now broker, Denise Holmes. She runs our Middleton office. Okay. And I was doing yard work for her. Okay. And she, my, mom was, my mom and her were friends, so yeah. she must have talked to my mom, and she goes... Luke got his real estate license. She comes up and goes, hey, do you want a job? Okay. So it was zero experience, basically, not knowing what I'm doing. And she was the one who trained me and basically molded me into what I am today. Nice. And now you're the number <laughs> you know, one well, agent at Bunbury, Hey, right? she's a heck of a coach. Okay. And that, that really, I mean, whenever we have people that are coming to the office and they're talking about doing real estate, I always praise her for that. I mean, it's unbelievable. So. Yeah. 18 years ago, I go into the office and she, it was supposed to be an interview and I basically moved desks around and then she goes, that's your desk right there. So I started and just went off. So yeah, it was quite a while ago. Okay. Yeah, but 18 years in the biz. 18 years. And I've been with Bunbury the whole time. Okay. It's a great company. Um, you know, been in Madison, working the surrounding areas. It's uh, It's been challenging. You know, you start, I started right before the mortgage meltdown. Which yeah. You, well, right. When I started you know, too, I remember. Yeah. I mean, there's all those guys that were doing it well beforehand and they had, you know, so much repeat business. Yeah. Well, you, as a new guy, you're clawing and scratching. Right. You know, you don't right. just... You don't just start and get working on things. It's yeah. you're working trying to find people that trust you, you know? Yeah. So went through that. Then you, you know, you get to this part of the market where it's the seller's market and you have to really kind of direct people on how to get a house. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's a big change, you know, and it, it's it's tough for some agents coming in to realize, you know, the different aspects of you know okay now you have a ton of listings you can show buyers and you're taking out you're showing i think the record i had back in the day was 70 houses i showed someone in a month wow yeah yeah, yeah. they gave me a plaque at closing <laughs> those patient realtors <laughs> i love it i love it yeah so and then now, nowadays you're really showing one house and just trying to get people to yeah. you know understand how to get it yeah you know and a lot of them are like oh you're just trying to get a sale and i'm like no i'm trying to tell you how to get a house yeah you know yeah it's not as easy as it looks it's the reality from yeah. from real quick from the seller's perspective right now with all the i'm assuming a lot of offers coming in as long as the house is in good standing mm -hmm. what are you doing with 10 offers are you just like oh three percent down toss it like how, how do you present to the seller yeah like the best ones or well you got to present them all oh, no matter what present them all. Oh, yeah so it. like a lot of times what we're doing these days is we've got i kind of present a timeline to sellers when we're going through this you know we're going to take pictures on a monday or tuesday we're going to put it on the market on a thursday have no showings till saturday showings through happens throughout the weekend and then we have the posted presentation time you know hey we want offers by monday at three and we're going to present them at five so between three and five, I am basically going through the offers, giving kind of like a cliff notes of the whole deal and saying, here's, you know, the the purchase price, here's their financing, closing date and all that stuff. Um, usually when I call people at five o'clock or whatever time we decide, they know which one they're, or two of them that they're going to. So you're sending with. them all the offers yep. to look before you meet with them. Before we meet with them. And a lot of times now with DocuSign and everything else you can do online, I'm not meeting with them. Yeah. You know, we're, okay. we're we talking have a phone about conversation the phone. Sure. and say, here, you know, Bob Smith's offer is better than this person's offer. And, yeah. you know, kind of just talk through the details. Ultimately, it's their decision of what they want to take. I'm going to give them my opinion. Like, hey, here's a cash offer, might be a little lower, but this is no contingencies. So there's a lot of different things that we'll talk about. And some people usually know. You know, and they just want to hear my yeah. perspective on it, and then they'll make a decision right then, or they'll say, "Hey, let us have dinner," and they'll, you know, say, "We want to sign that one." Yeah. So it's it's not 
it's not a tough decision for people. There are some where you get the first time home buyers coming in and they're trying to get it and they're going 10 over. And then you get the people that have lost out so many different times and they're just going crazy. No inspections, no appraisals, getting cash, all sorts of different things. So, yeah. yeah. So are you ever coaching them like the seller? Because I think the sellers, a lot of times, at least in my, my thought is like, curious to hear what you say. They'll see like, hey, 20% down and it's $25,000 more Mm -hmm. than a cash offer. Um, You know, maybe there's all contingencies are checked on that offer that's $25,000 more. Yeah. Are you coaching them sometimes or to say, hey, look, you you might want to reconsider the cash offer, rethink it or sleep on it? Well, we kind of just talk through what can happen. Yeah. You know, here, this, the home inspection, something could happen from there. This one doesn't have a home inspection. Yeah. You know, the financing, someone could lose a job. Okay. Appraisal could go, look at how high these are going. Maybe the appraisal won't come in. Yeah. And we just have to say, these are the things that could happen versus this offer. Mm -hmm. You sign it and you're going to closing. Yeah. You're just waiting. Yeah. That's it. And you're getting a proof of funds letter or or something. Yep. So it just sounds like the education approach. Yeah. And I try to do doing. that on the front end of like, you know, when we do the market analysis, we're talking about pricing their house. How do we price it? You know, what is it worth and where should we price it to get the most offers? Yeah. You know, let's say it's worth 525 but do we price it at 500 to get the the most amount of offers and to get the cleanest offers? Because uh-huh. people walking in there will look at it and say, oh, my God, look at all these showings that are happening. And they'll usually call me and say, how much activity have you had? Well, if it's a good agent, what they're going to say is, hey you know what, you're going to have to make the cleanest offer possible because this is priced well and everyone's going to be going above. So we talk about that a lot and just kind of run through all that stuff so they understand what the the, the process is. Got it. Yeah. So it kind of flipped over to the buyers um, when you're, you know, I guess first-time home buyers you're dealing with, what are you telling them right away to, to be competitive in this market? I mean, yeah. I just want them to be realistic. So I, this week I had a couple of calls from people, and I told them straight out, if you're looking at 300 just plan to spend, like, you have to go about thirty or $40,000 over to have a chance. And that's not even talking about the inspections or the appraisal or anything like that. You just need to be prepared. So if you can afford a certain amount, maybe look a little bit lower or try to, you know, be a little bit more comfortable with the payment that you're going to be having at a higher price. Um, you know, 350 in Madison doesn't get you a whole lot anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's it's more about just letting them know what to expect so we're not getting into that, okay, I love this house, now how high do I have to go? And them going, well, I can't do that. You yeah. know, I'd much rather have them on the front end looking at this, planning and going, if this is nice as it, you know, it looks online, I'm going to need to be able to spend more. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm thinking back to like when I was a first-time home buyer, like I was like, hey, we, you know, want this, 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 and this. Yeah. I don't, I mean, that can't, no, I mean, happen anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, are you are you having that conversation up front? Like, yeah. Do you listen to what they want and say, okay, you can get one of those? Yeah, I usually say, you know what, pick out a few things that are important. If it's location and the style of the house, yeah, you know, you things can be changed. Mm-hmm. The goal is to get a house, yeah, you know. And I mean, if you need to have a certain thing, totally understand that. Yeah. That's fine, but you know, you just have to have your expectations there as far as you can't get ten out of ten of what's on your wish list. Yeah, you know, if you can get three out of ten, pay. Hey, that's a that's a win, yeah. you know. I mean, you got a house, yeah. So. And you know, a lot of people are also they, you know, they kind of are. They go, well, you know, Luke, we don't want to go crazy on things. And I'm like, well, then you really have to reevaluate what you're what you want to do here. Yeah, you know. So just kind of an honest, yeah, direct conversation. It's just so disheartening for people when they get beat out. Uh, and uh, offers 12 times, yeah, you know? Yeah. Then they just say, do you want to make an offer? Sure, let's throw one at it, yeah, you know? And yeah. it's, sometimes it doesn't work out, and they just, they feel bad. They yeah. just, they're losing interest, you yeah. know? So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just to chime in, as I mentioned to you when we, we met for dinner a couple of weeks ago, uh, that cash offer program we have, that's, it's been really helpful for those disheartened buyers where we kind of vet them yeah. and let them waive all contingencies, um, and we guarantee them alone yeah uh and we let and we provide a proof of funds letter um, and this is this is something that the owners are providing like yeah the owners of a plus mortgage so basically let's just use like a, a five hundred thousand dollar you know purchase as an example so like if somebody's got you know we, we typically want to see at least they've got 10 percent down yeah. um but ideally 20 percent or more um so we'll verify that they've got you know at least that plus some reserves and then we will guarantee 
a loan of let's say four hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. So the owners, Alex and Pete of A Plus, with a twenty percent down payment, will provide a short letter. Hey, Luke, proof of funds letter. We are guaranteeing them a loan. You know, for example, if they lose their job a day before closing, doesn't matter. Still closing. We're still closing. Yeah. We're giving them a loan. Now yeah. we've kind of got a backup loan in place. Yeah. The ultimate goal is to still get them the market rate and get them the loan that they want. Um, and then we show their funds letter from U.S. Bank or their bank statement showing they've got the hundred grand. You know, again going off the five hundred. Mm-hmm. So we provide a proof of funds letter at four hundred, and then I call you and go over. Hey, no, we. Most people are like, like you'll, you'll be like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're guaranteeing yeah. them a loan as it says. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's been pretty cool. That helps those disheartened buyers. So we've been stepping in. It puts situations. them in a better place for buying, for sure. Puts them in a better place, yeah. and a lot of people balk at it. Um, and there's a little bit of a cost because we're taking on some risk up front. Yeah. Um, but those that have, have utilized, actually, I got one going this week. Um, they got an accepted offer on their first one. Actually, moving from Madison to here, I try to get them to list with you. In Madison, <laughs> Come my, on, Jim. I know they already had so many. My bad. Yeah, that's all right. But uh, but going over to cash real quick are you seeing a lot of cash offers or how often are you seeing cash offers yeah we're seeing quite a few cash offers um you know and i talk with a lot of younger people that are coming in here maybe they have five percent down or ten percent down in their family their mom and dad are you know fairly wealthy and they can offer cash we'll put them all on the offer to purchase and then we also put in there we have the right to remove them right before closing so basically got it then we can have them you know have them the the young Right cash, yeah, but right still cash. get a loan. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then at closing, the kids close, the parents have no, no involvement. Yeah. So yeah. it's a it's a way around it. And some people are like, hey, you know what? My parents aren't comfortable with it. Yep. No problem. And I, it's just a question to ask. Well, and I used to do that before we rolled out this cash offer program. Because like, I get a lot of business from financial planners. Yeah. Because I've just been doing this a long time. Baird, you know, US Bank, BMO. Yeah. I work with a bunch of financial planners. So like, and their parents will refer their kids in. And I'll be like, or I used to do this because- I'd be like, hey, I know your parents have some some money. Why don't we show, you know, them their bank statement mm-hmm. and write cash? But now we don't have to do that because because you got this. Program. We got this program, and the owners of A Plus are willing to do a portfolio loan if needed. Um, again, knock on wood, we've not had anybody lose their jobs. Yeah. We've always got them, you know, the market rate and sure. we're closed. But it's 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 a cool tool. Yeah. To have. Well, it's a, if you can have cash anyway, it's going to put you in a much better position. Yeah. Taking that financing contingency aspect out of it and also the appraisal contingency, it yeah. makes that offer look that much better. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, uh, uh, one last thing on the cash, are you seeing, like, I feel like when I watch CNBC, they talk about, um, you know, down in Florida and whatnot, you know, LLCs are buying cash. Do you see that much? No. In Madison, no. It's just, no. it's more individuals. Yeah, okay. more individuals. Yeah. I mean, you see a lot of people that have taken money out of the stocks because stocks were up and down for so sure. long and they were buying, they want to buy real estate. Yeah. I have a friend that has been, you know, buying some uh, student rentals downtown Madison. He's doing about one a year. Okay. A, you know, he just wanted to jump into it and take it out of ca- or equities. Yeah. And, yeah. and he's looking at it from a standpoint of, you know what, I'm, I got someone else who's paying a retirement account for me. And yeah. after oh, 19, 20 years, I'll sell this and I haven't had gotcha. to put much into it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, you know, and it's, I, I think that the, the, you know, people taking it out of the the stocks depends what you're comfortable with. Right, but, right. I've uh, got your tax implications. Yeah, there. but they've seen. You know, they're seeing the values go up, especially in Madison. I mean, we were priced oh, so low yeah. before, and now we're kind of catching up with everything. Yeah. So, a um, couple quick questions, then we'll wrap this one up. And, yeah. I, and I just want to talk about your investment properties and Airbnbs for the next episode. Yeah. Um, but um, real quick, on title in Madison, when I get deals in Madison, like the seller, you know chooses the title i mean or can you know the um choose the title company they always like force us to use them whereas like down here like usually i use the title company i prefer for the buyers yeah it just seems like a a mafia type situation up there like they're like no you're using us that's just what we do here yeah yeah bully me and i've been (laughs) i've been doing you know (laughs) you didn't bully me in a couple deals we've had no well and it's just the way it is in madison and i don't know why it's been that way okay like i've went to green county south of madison and we you know they put buyers in separate rooms and it was just it's different so like in dane county it just seems like you know they hey we're using this title company 
and where everyone's using it. And no yeah. one really asks the question. Yeah. It's a lot of times when you get an outside lender, you know, that's from Milwaukee or yeah. something like that, you'll have them say, okay, what? Me, who's this you, freaking you're guy? Yeah, like, what are we doing? This Two title companies? You kidding me? <laughs> this is a lot of work now. <laughs> no, but that's just kind of, I think, what it's- Just the way it is. The way that. it is, yeah. Okay. And I think if you pressed it hard enough and said, we're using a different title company, it's not a problem. Sometimes I do just yeah. like out of spite. Yeah, just like, like, I want- Why are you going to tell me what, what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do what I want to yeah. do. <laughs> oh nice and then maybe to close on this one when we were at well, there's green bush bar yep great pizza place oh, not unbelievable been. so good and just a cool vibe it's like open like thursday to saturday yeah it's like an old italian community center on top old school bar and there was like no college students so it's like yeah you know and what did they serve four to seven yeah it's like four to seven it. thursday to at, saturday we left at like six forty five. Yeah. people were going out there like what the heck is going on here <laughs> such a cool place it check it really out cool. but you shared that story about just i was just like hey you have any unusual stories i don't think you were involved in it but like maybe it was like a friend bought something in florida and he didn't get insurance or something oh yeah well yes it, it was Tell me that Fort, that was Fort just... Myers Beach. Okay. And they they bought a condo down there, a townhouse style one, and that hurricane came through. A couple and, years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. Half. Just crushed it. I mean, the, the, it was gone. Literally condo. gone. Condo gone. So they've been in just this, you know, back and forth with the association because they were two bedrooms and now they're, you know, trying to make them larger for three bedrooms because a lot of these are rentals and you get obviously more money with a three bedroom. So they're they're trying to figure out how many people want to do that. And obviously, when you get into condos, you've got a lot of different personalities that are involved. And some people don't want to do one thing because it's, it's going to cost more money. So, yes, unfortunately, they're going through this process. And it was an investment and not really getting, obviously, getting any money for it. So not a good investment. Well, and it will be at some point once they can rebuild this thing. Yeah. You know, but, yeah, having that. But he paid cash, so it's not like he's sitting on a mortgage. Right, paying right. interest. Yeah, but it's still just having that cash sit there. And then, you know, when you pay cash, you don't have to get the insurance, which the insurance was outrageous. And yeah, I don't. Florida, yeah. Frankly, I don't blame him for not doing it. And most yeah. people don't if they own it outright. but. Yeah. You know, then you get to this point where something like this happens, and it's like, holy cow, this is a disaster. Should have, should have got the insurance. Should have got the insurance. But you know, how, what was the last hurricane down? Yeah, what was that like twenty some years ago? Yeah, you know, yeah, they so, haven't been hit in well, forever. Yeah. So yeah, it's just one of those things that, you know, and ironically enough, we were going to buy something down there. Oh wow. Yeah, and we had not sold one of our rental properties. Okay. And I just didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I we we didn't, and now our my wife and I are like, you know what, we're gonna continue to focus on Madison properties because then we'll just use whatever profits we get from those and rent something for a yeah. couple of weeks. Just yeah. call it a day. I mean, I would love to own something in Florida, but this just really kind of freaks you out. Yeah. When something like that happens, totally. what if you had a mortgage? Yeah. You know, you're paying condo fees, the mortgage, yeah. and everything else, and that all is, you're just sitting there paying it right. for months and months, yeah. years. Yeah, that was an interesting story. So I just yeah. thought I'd bring that up. Yeah. Well, hey, let's stick around. If you're good to stick around. Yeah, I'm going right. nowhere. Let's go. Yeah, we got lunch after <laughs> yeah. with uh, Pedal Tavern, uh, Derek uh, Collins. So. Oh, boy, I better get a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can uh, He can take things to another level yeah, pretty quickly. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we'll wrap this one and we'll come back, talk some of your investment properties and Airbnb because I haven't had like an Airbnb person on, so I'm psyched sure. to chat a little bit about that. Um, all right, so we got Luke Bruckner here, Bunbury Associates, one of the best realtors in Madison, maybe the state, maybe the country. Thanks for coming down. This has been the Snod Pod with John Snodgrass, your mortgage resource. We're talking mortgages, real estate, and beyond. <laughs>